Yo, what's up guys? It's Talon. Today I'm going to be teaching you guys some wave management tricks to help you guys win lane and win more games in Wild Rift. So here, the first example, you can see I'm clearly losing my lane quite hard and he's shoving the lane into me. However, my jungler is nearby so I know I'm relatively safe. So I'm still comfortable just farming up under tower and I feel relatively safe overall. And then the big thing that we're going to see here guys is I'm going to try to hit the minion wave faster than he can hit it. Once it does come under my tower, this way I will level up quicker than him. So you're going to see, since the wave is under my tower, I have access to farming it. Meanwhile, he cannot really farm my wave because it's so far under tower. So you're going to see he overextends and uses his abilities to try to farm it. But all this dove does is push the wave further into me, allowing me once again to farm without him being able to farm, giving me an XP advantage and allowing me to easily trade with him once I get level 5. So you're going to see here, I'm going to be hitting the wave as soon as the next wave comes so that i can get level five as fast as possible i'm even going to use abilities and everything on it i do not care if he decides to trade with me because i have the minion wave in my advantage so he will take extra minion damage if he does trade with me and then you can see here i get level five off the wave before he gets level five allowing me to easily trade with him and they're going to see he overextends here just enough for me to use this to end up getting the kill onto him despite losing that lane so again guys just a thing that's important to note when you do get pushed under your tower if you're able to freeze the minion wave like i did there just before your tower then you can farm the minions before he's able to farm them therefore allowing you to level up earlier than him and then using that level advantage to kill them in lane okay guys later on in the same game i'm gonna do another important thing that i want you guys to take note of and that is simply once you crash the wave getting a quick recall so that they are stuck with less options I, as you can see, have a big wave stacked up, so I want to crash this wave under tower so that I don't get ganked because I don't know where the jungler is. I don't know if I'm going to be ganked or anything like this, so as fast as possible, I want to get the wave under turret. Not only do I get the wave under turret and give myself a good time to back, but you can see Garen is stuck in lane farming these minions. And now, after he's done farming the minions, he only has two options. He can either recall or shove the next wave. If he recalls, I get to lane first, I'm able to get a turret plate or two, and then I can leave the lane once again earlier to rotate to Dragon or Herald while he's stuck clearing the next minion wave. And if he does what he does here, he's of course overextended while I have my Trinity Force bot and he has not yet bought items, meaning I can easily trade with him and absolutely destroy him like I do here. So as you can see, if you build up a big wave, you typically want to crash it under tower if you don't have your jungler nearby because you're only going to put yourself at bigger risk of being ganked. So if you do what I do there where you shove it under the tower as fast as possible, you then leave the enemy top laner with only two options and regardless of which option he chooses, he will be at a disadvantage overall. Okay guys, so once again, in this same game, I do another important thing here, and that is after I kill him, I take turret plates and then I shove the lane under tower so you can see that my minion wave is bigger than his and therefore going to continue to push under his tower. So instead of going back to lane, where I don't really have much to gain, I go towards the mid lane, where I can not only impact the dragon, but also push the mid lane and gain an advantage there. So you're going to see I do exactly that. I end up even getting a kill on Akali because I rotated mid. Again, since my lane was already pushed under his tower, he has nothing he can really do. And then I'm able to go to mid lane and end up pressuring the mid lane just like I do here. And it also gives me easier access to the dragon. Okay guys, so in this next clip, you're going to see that as Renekton, I'm instantly hitting the wave. And the reason for this is because level 1, Malphite is a champion who can poke me really hard and I can't do much about it because I don't have any way to gap close level 1. So a lot of times, a lot of melee champions won't have gap closers and therefore won't be able to do much in lane if a champion has more range on them, whether it's like this Malphite with abilities or whether it's just a range top laner or something like that. So you can see here, I instantly got level 2. And what does this do? One, it builds up my rage bar because I'm hitting the wave all the time. Two, it allows me to get level two so that I can gap close and do a trade like I just did on the Malphite here. And three, it allows me again with my rage bar being built up to end up sustaining his damage because my, I get extra healing if I have the rage bar built up. So while it may seem like a small thing, simply hitting for level two and getting level two as fast as possible to have access to your gap closers as a melee champion such as Renekton will allow you to end up winning the lane against uh, ranged champions or champions with a lot of poke like Malphite. And while it may not seem like I'm winning this lane because of the health disadvantage, I actually am winning this lane because not only is my jungler near, meaning I know that I can be over aggressive like this, but I am draining his mana pool very, very fast so that he won't have enough damage to end up poking me in the end, which will end up leading to me killing him later on in the lane. Okay guys, so this next clip is quite short, but I just want to explain a very simple early game wave management trick. 
especially useful in mid lane but useful in all lanes and that is shoving the lane as fast as possible level one into certain matchups so here as jace versus vex it's very very difficult for me to necessarily get any type of actual trade onto him early um and for that reason i end up just shoving this lane as fast as possible and there's other factors present that allow me to do this one their jungler is shivana who cannot gank early so me pushing the lane is not going to put me in danger of a gank because shivana is very bad at ganking early on two it allows me to get level two faster so you can see here that i end up getting a trade very well on the vex because of the fact that i get the level advantage and three because of the fact that i have nunu who is an aggressive ganking jungler i can help her with her ganks early on because i have lane priority and don't have to worry about um getting ganked or anything because of who the enemy jungler is so i will easily be able to rotate to help my shivana or, or rather to help my nunu whenever she needs okay guys and another important thing to note um when playing any lane is it's important to shove your lane before the objective spawns if you want to help so in this situation i want to fight at the dragon so about 15 10 whatever amount of seconds before the dragon spawns i shove my lane in back not only do i back and get the lane shoved but i also allow myself to buy an item so that i am stronger for this next team fight okay guys so in this situation i end up trading really aggressively with uh darius i have the advantage very heavily in this lane i have my rage bar built up i have ultimate i have a lot of factors to even potentially 1v2 so their jungler recently ganked me meaning that he probably does not have camps on the bottom side of the map so i would expect their jungler to most likely be top side but even if their jungler does come to my side of the map i feel i can probably 1v2 them and for this reason i am pressuring really aggressively i'm pushing the wave under this darius's tower and what this does is it causes him to be able to not farm as well because it's harder to farm when you're getting pressured under your turret and then it also allows me to pressure the wave so that he can't back so if i keep shoving this lane he has to decide between backing and losing farm as well as turret plates and just being low health under tower being diveable and, and being potentially even just killable just for me and you're going to see here he ends up choosing to back meaning that i'm able to get free turret plates but even had he stayed i would be wasting their jungler's time because their jungler would have to come to bail him out and not only that but he would probably miss farm under turret while i'm pressuring him so just overall there's a lot of factors present that allow me to just continue to pressure him under tower even despite the fact that it's possible their jungler could gank me because once again i know the limits of my champion well enough where i know there is definitely a possibility i can 1v2 here um and then now he's back he has higher health he has his ultimate up so at this point i'm deciding to now just farm safely and allow the wave to push back into me as you can see um so yeah just overall when you have the advantage in lane if you know that it's pretty likely that the jungler can't gank you or that you know the limits of your champion well enough that you could 1v2 it's really uh good to generally pressure them under tower that way because then they're stuck under tower farming and they're not allowed to back and get items and get health back and all of those things which allows you to eventually dive them or just keep them in a bad spot in lane whenever your jungler gets there to help gank you or anything like that okay guys so this next clip is very important in my opinion Scuttle crab spawns around 125, meaning that a jungler will often gank around 110, 115 since they'll be in the area to get the scuttle crab anyways. So this is a typical time to expect to gank is 110, 115, 120-ish. Because of this, I do not want my wave in a bad state around that time. Basically what I'm going to do here, level one, I trade aggressively and I make sure that I'm hitting the wave and having the wave pushing. And then I build up a bigger wave in this next, uh, you know, this next wave so that i can end up crashing the wave right before uh, a minute therefore the wave will reset before the enemy jungler ganks me the reason for this is because if i crash a wave under his tower that whole wave will die and that means that the next wave will be equal health where i'll have as many minions as him and that means that they will push into me naturally if he last hits them i may lose one or two minions but this is better than of course getting ganked and dying so you're gonna see here again it's 50 seconds that's roughly when i know 10 20 seconds i might get ganked so for this reason i'm ending up shoving the lane so that i'm not very gankable and as you're going to see here i still trade with him but i crashed it under tower and again all these minions die so now i don't have to worry about those minions getting stuck right before the his turret and then making me either have to give up farm or give up um you know my life of course with getting ganked so you're going to see here i continue to stay up aggressively because i know as fiora that i can escape ganks with my w and my flash However, the minion wave starts to push into me because I even walk up and force him to W and it hits the wave as well. So again, here you're going to see the wave continues to be of equal health. Again, because I crashed the wave under the tower, it ends up meaning that we have equal amounts of minions. And what happens usually then if the wave crashes like that, but it ends up closer to their tower, 
is what you guys see right here and that's his next minion wave comes before mine gets to his and therefore now we have more minions than them because their minions started shooting my minions first again because my minion wave was pushed up further and then this allows the minion wave to start crashing under my turret and therefore making me not very gankable and making him very gankable so you can see at this exact timer it's quite convenient that my jungler is pathing towards me while he is ending up having to come more aggressive to farm because i have a much smaller minion wave and he has many more minions so now he's in quite a bad spot where he has to give up either farm or he has to get, choose to get ganked and so that's why i'm going to end up pressuring him really aggressively here and my jungler is going to go for a gank now it's a bit too uh, early for my jungler to go gank there but however even despite that it just allows me to continue to freeze the wave under my tower um so i know this is kind of a bit confusing this whole explanation but basically what i want you guys to gather from this is if you think that you're going to be ganked pretty soon but you already have the bigger minion wave shove that minion wave as fast as possible so that all those minions die and don't end up getting stuck uh, near their tower this means that the minion wave will then you know you'll have an equal health minion wave to them and then it allows you to do exactly what i did here which is eventually get the minion wave to start pushing towards you okay guys so now what just happened to me is happening to him where the minion wave is starting to push back into his favor and for this reason i want to crash the wave as fast as possible so i'm not gankable once again but he makes a big mistake here and ends up continuing to hit the wave while it's near my tower and what does this do it pushes the wave into me again so once again i'm allowed to freeze here because he just keeps hitting the minion wave under my tower and you're going to see my next minion wave is going to come and it's just going to allow me to pretty much permanently freeze under him making him very gankable for this reason he has to walk up to farm and then puts himself in a very gankable position which my Lee Sin capitalizes on and we end up getting the kill so you can see the difference between how we played that is when i have the wave near his tower i try to get it under the tower as fast as possible so i minimize the amount of time that i am under his tower or near under his tower but what he does is he continues to shove the wave and allow it to not get fully shoved in therefore allowing him to be gankable for much longer so basically that is the main difference between our wave management here and that's what what allows me to get a huge gold lead and allows my jungler to easily camp him and get a free kill so yeah guys that's gonna be it for the video i know that last clip was a bit hard to follow so if you guys have questions or you want um you know better explanations let me know in the comments um i hope this wave management kind of tips and tricks uh video was useful for you guys this is definitely a very important thing especially in top lane but these tricks can be utilized in every lane so hopefully they're valuable to you guys and yeah i'll see you guys in the next video